What's up YouTube, how are you doing? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and in this video, we'll be checking out the SR7015 by Marantz, and I'm gonna show you how to set up 4K 120 so you guys are all set up for that new Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, and we're gonna check it out right after the jump. Today's video is brought to you by the Hi-Fi Summit, the world's first online hi-fi trade show. With a lack of physical trade shows, the Hi-Fi Summit is your gateway to all the new equipment coming out in the audio world. Whether you're into two-channel audio or home theater, the Hi-Fi Summit has you covered. With sponsors like Cherry Amplifiers, Parasound, and SVS, it is sure to be a great show. If you have never been to an audio trade show, now is your chance. Early bird tickets are available until October 1st, so click the link in the description and get yours today. In addition to all the cool stuff you're gonna see from your favorite brands, you're also going to get seminars, and of course, the star of the show is the VIP video chat. So make sure you get your early bird tickets, which are half price before October 1st. Did I mention? I'm DJing the after party, so you know it's going to be a good time. So make sure you grab your tickets at the link down in the description as the journey to the top continues with the Hi-Fi Summit quarter four, 2020. First things first, I wanna thank the good folks at Marantz for sending the SR7015 over for me to review. Thank you guys so much. The Marantz SR7015 retails for $2,300 and is a nine channel AVR that processes 11 channels. It supports all the immersive audio formats like Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, and Oro 3D. It also supports all forms of HDR, including HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, and HLG. In the box, we get a remote, batteries, Odyssey calibration mic, cardboard rocket ship mic stand, a manual, Wi-Fi antennas, AM antenna, FM antenna, and the coolest thing ever, cable labels. The front of the SR7015 has a simple layout with the classic Marantz vibe. Two knobs on either side of the porthole display with the Marantz logo on top. Opening the front panel, we are greeted with a host of buttons, auxiliary inputs, and a much larger LED screen. The back of this SR7015 looks gorgeous. There's a lot going on, so let's take it piece by piece. Along the bottom, we have 11 speaker outputs. I know this is a nine channel AVR, but if you add a two channel amp, you can have an 11 channel setup. They gave you all 11 outputs for more flexibility. Just above that, we have AM and FM antenna connections, five assignable analog inputs, a phono input. Now, people always ask what the difference is between Denon and Marantz, and at least on the back panel, this is something that is definitely different. The Marantz has a 7.1 analog input. Now, why would you need something like that? If you have like an older Blu-ray disc player, like something from Oppo, like the 93 or the 103, or if you have the newer ones, like the 203 and the 205 especially, you have 7.1 analog outputs. What that means is you'll be using the internal DAC of that machine, because usually they're pretty high up there, especially the Oppo UDP 205. So you'll connect a player to this 7.1 analog input on the back of the Marantz. Next, we have the pre-out section, which consists of zone two and zone three. And then we get to the 11 channel pre-outs. If you are going to use this AVR for pre-out mode, then you will use this section of RCAs to connect your external amplifiers. Now that's how my setup is. I've connected this up to two Parasound amplifiers. They're both five channel amplifiers. I have a 10 speaker system for a nine channel Atmos and a 10 channel Oro 3D. So we'll check out that setup in just a minute. And off to the right on this level, we have the power port. Moving upward, we have the component and composite video input and output, which again are assignable. Remote control in and out, ground screw for the turntable input, IR input, RS-232 connection, and two trigger outputs, which I'm using for my external amplifiers. Top row on the back panel starts off with the Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi antenna, digital audio input via two coaxial and two optical inputs, network port, six HDMI ports which support 4K60 with HDR. HDMI input number seven is the only HDMI 2.1 input supporting 8K resolution and 4K 120 hertz. Next, we have three HDMI outputs. Zone two is a 4K output only. Monitor one and monitor two are HDMI 2.1 outputs for 8K and 4K 120 support. 
Monitor 1 is the designated ARC slash eARC port, and the one I will be using to connect to my LG E9 OLED. Rounding out the back is the second Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, so first things first, let's make sure this AVR is ready for 8K sources, meaning the new gaming consoles Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. All right, so pick up the Marantz remote and press the setup button. Scroll down and select video. Next, scroll down and select 4K slash 8K enhanced mode. Now the default is set up for 4K enhanced mode, which is what you want for all your 4K HDR sources connected to the SR7015. Let's select this and set it to 8K enhanced mode. Now this will only affect the HDMI 2.1 input, which is HDMI input number seven. Once that's done, you are good to go. I went ahead and plugged in my Xbox One X to the 8K port. And if we go and check out the info pages on the Marantz, now, as you can see, we have a 4K source coming in that has VRR. So that is detected. That's variable refresh rate. That's good. And you can also see ALLM here up in the corner, meaning auto low latency mode is on and active. So it looks like to me, the SR7015 passes everything we need at this point in time. Now, I'm pretty sure the PS5 and the Xbox Series X will come with its own 8K cable, but you guys will be needing another 8K cable to go from the AVR to the TV. So I have linked up a couple down in the description. I personally have had the Zest kit before. You just wanna make sure whatever 8K cable you get, it has ethernet because that ethernet is what's going to make eARC possible. So if you're planning on using eARC or you just want to make sure you buy the right cable to support it, if in case you do want to use eARC at some point in the future, then definitely check out the link in the description for my recommended HDMI 2.1 cables. All right, let's move on to preamp mode. Now, this is what I already have set up. All right, from the menu, we need to go down to speakers, manual setup, and then select amp assign. From the diagram here, you can see I have five ear level speakers and I have five high channels. This is for my 9.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup and my 10.1 Oro 3D setup. To get to preamp mode is very simple. Select the top row and just scroll over until you get to preamp mode. Then designate how many speakers you have ear level and how many speakers you have height level and you're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through Dolby Atmos setup for 5.1.2, 5.1.4, so on and so forth. Now, if you've done the setup wizard when you had all of the speakers, you should be fine and you don't really need to do this. However, if you had like a 5.1 and then you picked up this AVR and then you added two high channels or four or whatever the case is, and then you added some surround back later on, you're gonna to need to follow these steps as you didn't have the speakers at the beginning when you first turned on this AVR to run through the speaker setup wizard. All right, so let's start off with the standard 5.1 and add some height channels. So in this amp assign screen, the top should say 9.1. We're gonna keep speaker layout to five and go down and add one pair of high channels. And you have a bunch of options. You can put it as top middle, top front, front height, rear height. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using one of the in-ceiling layouts. So now we've got a 5.1.2 setup ready to go. But actually, not really. What we need to do is turn those speakers on. So we got to back out of here, scroll down to speaker config. And now this diagram will show you the current speakers that are turned on. Notice we don't have any high channels turned on at all. And it shows on the list to the left as none. So we need to turn that none into small. If we leave it at none, we will get no sound coming out of those speakers. So it's very important we come to speaker config and turn on all the speakers. And this is something that is just common with Denon and Marantz. All right, so let's go back and add a second pair of high channels. And again, you have multiple options for your layout. I like to use front height and rear height because this is kind of how it mimics in my room. Also front height and rear height is what you can use to get all three DTSX, Dolby Atmos and Oro 3D without having to come back and change settings when you wanna watch something that's in Oro 3D. And again, we wanna back out, go to speaker config and turn on the rear height speakers. Okay, so that's your 5.1.4. Let's now move on to a seven channel setups. 
So to do that, we need to go to layout and instead of just taking this five speakers, we wanna change that to five plus SB. That stands for plus surround back. Once we've done that, we gotta go back out over to speaker config and turn them on. All right, let's add two more Atmos channels. Let's try Dolby speakers this time. Selecting the layout and then going back to speaker config to turn on the speakers that you have just added. All right, so now let's check out an 11 channel setup. Seven ear level speakers, four height channels. To do that, we actually need to change the top from 9.1, scroll over to 11.1. Once we do that and add the surround back and the four height channels, we get a pre-out option. Now this pre-out option will be for your rear height or your front mains. Meaning if you have a smaller-ish two-channel amplifier, maybe 50 watts per channel into two or 80 watts per channel into two, put that on your rear height. However, if you have 150 times two or 200 times two, you're gonna want to use that for your main speakers. So put your pre out to the main front and left. So that's how you set up an 11 channel Dolby Amos or DTSX setups. All right, now let's set up ARC. Go to setup, video, HDMI setup, and just scroll down and turn on ARC. All right, so we did the unboxing. We went over 4K 120 setup. We went over Dolby Atmos, DTSX, Oro 3D, IMAX enhanced setup. And I also showed you where to turn on ARC. Of course, with ARC, you're gonna have to do some settings on your TV. Every TV manufacturer is different. So those are gonna be different steps involved there. I usually put that in with my TV review and I did check out the Sony A8H and the Samsung Q90T. So if you haven't seen those videos on how to set up eARC, make sure you check out the description box. I'll put those down in the links there. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited about this. Will I switch from Denon over to Marantz? I don't know. This thing looks pretty nice and like looks like pretty nice. They're like, it's just, it's really cool. It barely, barely fits into this rack here. As you can see, it's got like one finger space <laughs> between the Marantz and the top shelf here. But yeah, I'll be reviewing this AVR for quite a bit of time. So I'll let you guys know. And if you have any questions about it, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, a big shout out and thank you to those over there. Marantz has sent this over for me to review. Thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. If you guys at home have any questions about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Go ahead, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time.